Hello students. We have taken up the first five chapters of Aristotle's Poetics in our earlier session. Today we are taking up chapters 6 till chapter 10. The sixth chapter is the most important chapter in Poetics because it deals with the definition of tragedy and the constituent elements of a tragedy. Aristotle says that poetry or tragedy, which is imitated in hexameter verse, has been discussed in this. And he says he is going to give a formal definition resulting from what has been already said. And this definition has already been dealt in the earlier chapters. He further gives a comprehensive definition of what constitutes a tragedy. Tragedy then is an imitation of an action that is serious, complete and of a certain magnitude. In language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament, the several kinds being found in separate parts of the play in the form of action, not of narrative, through pity and fear affecting the proper purgation of these emotions. Now first of all he says tragedy is imitation of an action that is serious, complete and of certain magnitude. Now these three things are important because when Aristotle talks about an action, he talks about the nature of a tragedy which develops out of three aspects that is which he has talked in earlier chapters also, object, medium and manner. The object of a tragedy is imitation of an action. Now, how should the action be? It should be serious. It should be complete. The action should be, has, should carry some seriousness or gravity. It should be complete and it should have a certain magnitude. Then he says the language, language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament. The medium of tragedy is language because the medium of conveying the thought of a poet is language. The language should be embellished as much as it can be allowed. The several kinds being found in several parts of the play in the form of an action. Now not of narrative. He says several kinds being found in separate parts of the play. The manner of imitation can be dramatic or narrative. He has talked about it in the earlier chapter. Through pity and fear. Now this through pity and fear is the function of a tragedy. What does a tragedy does do? It creates pity and fear. Now this pity and fear is created to purgate the audience of their emotions. That is they provide a kind of an outlet for the emotions of the audiences. He has given a term called catharsis for this which is although a pleasurable moment when we watch a play or read a drama but this conveys a sense of relief because it gives us an outlet for the emotions that we are carrying and it can be fully uh, it cannot be fully pity and fear cannot be suppressed so they can have some kind of an ill effect on the mind of the audience so it is very necessary that the audience purgates it there and then before he comes out of the uh, theater now Aristotle has given the definition of tragedy which has all the elements, constituent elements of a tragedy and he says then the tragic imitation it implies, um, sorry, by language embellishment he explains this that I mean language into which rhythm, harmony and song enter. So the language should have all these three elements and the several kinds of several parts, that is some parts are rendered through the medium of verse, others are rendered through the aid of song. We have read Shakespeare and we know that certain part of the chorus and certain songs are inserted uh, and certain um, and few of the moments are only rendered in verse. Then he says that tragic, imi tragic imitation implies personal act, persons acting, it necessarily follows that spectacular equipment will be a part of tragedy and then song and diction and then the medium of imitation and he again explains the word diction where he says that it is referred to as the metrical arrangement of the words 
and song it is a term which everyone understands because we know what song is then he says that tragedy as defined is the imitation of an action and action implies personal agents now these personal agents necessarily possess certain distinctive qualities both of the character and of thought and by these we qualify our actions and these thoughts and character are the natural causes from where the action arises now this action also leads to success or failure so when he describes these uh, parts first of all he says plot plot is the imitation of an action and by plot he says i mean the arrangement of incidents so all the arrangement of human actions or experiences comprises and makes the plot then he says character the second one is character character i mean that virtue in which we describe certain qualities to the agents now character of these agents or dramatic uh, characters or dramatic personae is something which is important for a tragedy then he says a uh, thought is required wherever a statement is proved then the third is the thought thoughts which are expressed by the characters during the course of action and uh, or it may be a general truth which has been enunciated whatever then he says every tragedy must have six parts which parts determine its quality plot character diction thought spectacle and song now we have to understand that two of these parts constitute the medium of imitation and one of one of the manner and three the objects of imitation and this is how the list is completed out of these six elements aristotle says that um the two elements that are to do with medium of imitation are say diction and melody and the sixth element is spectacle so out of these the plot is considered to be the most important and it is said to be the soul life and soul of tragedy because he says most important of all is the structure of incidents because tragedy is an imitation not of men but of an action and of life and life consists in action and its end is a mode of action not a quality now character determines men's quality but it is by their actions that they are happy or the reverse dramatic action therefore is not with a view to the representation of character character comes as a subsidiary to the actions hence the incidents and plot are the end of tragedy and the end is the chief thing of all now he says character can be drawn with certain psychological skills and a uh, great poetic and rhetorical brilliance of the writer helps us in bringing and building about a character but they cannot in itself make a tragedy tragedy in fact is the story of the or the essence of a tragedy and we cannot have a picture without a shape or design similarly we cannot have a character without the plot the incident uh, like he says the insist continuous insistence on the significance of plot has been explained by aristotle uh, in its fullest sense in the context of drama and the artistic equivalent he says of action is real life because the characters on the stage they imitate real life and it has to be remembered he further says that action is not purely an external act it is something which is known as an inward process which is working outward or the expression of a man's rational personality in the drama he says the characters are not described but they enact their own story and so reveal themselves now he says that we known them not from what we are told of them because we don't know what what the characters mean to say but by their performance we get to know and peep inside their hearts and without this action he says the poem or the poetry would not be complete and would not become a drama in itself now further he is placing uh, the action and character against one another because drama he says without character is not possible now this further has to be understood very clearly because this is not the actual sense or the literal sense that he was conveying 
the meaning probably is that tragedy uh, in there must be a moral character of the individual agents which are portrayed sometimes weak and sometimes strong and they help us or the writer to evolve an action and the persons can be simple types they cannot agree that action remains uh, the primary principle or the significant principle in a drama and number of terms have been used by aristotle um, in this chapter because he says and the most prominent is he says um, without action there cannot be a tragedy there may be without character and then he uh, talks about the trage tragedies of modern poets while they fail in rendering of a character uh, similarly in the kind of painting because if we the, if the writer is just stringing together a speech or speeches uh, which are not well finished and complete they will not produce the essential tragic effect because the uh, ultimate aim or objective of the uh, the writer is to produce a tragic effect it will not be produced and besides this he says the most powerful elements uh, instead is the reversal of the situation and the recognition now these are the important terms which we he has given and we will also discuss these terms as terms later on when we finish up this uh, text uh, these are also important parts of the play because as soon as we know that certain situation has been reversed completely and then a recognition uh, happens on the part of the writer this uh, makes it lends it a, a, another important feature to the completion of a tragedy uh, so he says the plot is the first principle it's the soul of tragedy character is the second place uh, because and third is the thought thought is the faculty of saying whatever is we can is possible to say and pertinent in the given circumstances and in the case of oratory he says that or in the case of political arts rhetoric is something that is a very important feature in the hands of the writer which makes the thought go across the audiences so the language of the rhetoricians this is what aristotle talks about this and then he says character when it reveals a moral purpose uh, whatever the character or the man chooses or avoids rather those speeches are manifested uh, and they are become a representative feature of the character themselves and the fourth element he says is diction because probably the element or the expression of meaning in words is con conveyed through verse and prose and song of course is used in tragedy as a feature of embellishment or it rather ornaments and embellishes the plot spectacle he says it has a, a special emotional attraction of its own because uh, for the power of tragedy he says uh, the all the six features have to uh, go in consonance and they should produce certain spectacular effects which again uh, depend more on the stage mechanism than on the poet now chapter 7th in chapter 7th he says that we have talked about this principle now let us talk about the structure of the plot because this chapter deals with the construction of the plot and the necessity of the plot uh, as a whole or being a whole when he says tragedy is an imitation of an action that is uh, complete in itself whole and of a certain magnitude a whole is something which he says um, aristotle defines as something which has a beginning a middle and an end now this beginning does not itself follow anything by casual necessity he says something naturally or comes to be uh, on the contrary he says the end itself follows some other thing either by necessity or as a rule now he, this is very simple to be explained so a well constructed plot therefore neither begins nor end at haphazard but confirm to the principles of wholeness so beginning does not come after something else as a consequence it is casually related to what comes after it and it does not however mean that tragedy should begin from the beginning it should be more effective if the tragic action uh, were to begin later in some part of a uh, life in the hero's life but the beginning should always be self explanatory and it should not need the knowledge of any other circumstances or earlier circumstances 
and uh, vice versa it should not be that uh, why this happened and how this happened so the middle obviously follows naturally at the beginning and leads to the end uh, which is known as a catastrophe in the technical language and of course we know that the end is casually related to something which has already happened earlier and nothing coming after it now uh, further he talks about the magnitude of the plot he says the magnitude of the plot uh, depends upon the like the writer it should neither be too small not too large and it should not be small because the beauty will not be appreciated and if it is very long we will not have clear impression of the whole so unless until unless it is not of a suitable length we cannot appreciate the orderly arrangements of the part of the whole so length should be retained by the memory and it should be long enough to allow a sequence of images within the limits of probability and necessity and that is why he says probability and necessity both are essential for essential features of the plot the orderly arrangement of parts must be of a certain magnitude but the limit he says is fixed by the nature of the drama and admits a change from bad fortune to good and from good fortune to bad now in the 8th chapter he talks about the unity of plot where he says the plot must have a unity the unity does not consist in the fact that the action dealing deals with the single hero's life a man may go go through various experiences and do many deeds in his life he says that he homer was a master of this because he chose single uh, action and not merely a single hero and secondly he says the plot must involve a coherence or an organic unity like the living organism each and every part has a relationship to one another but the distinct relationship makes the whole so removal of one part will disturb the other and disjoin it so by implication he says he does not approve of any double action in a play and insist upon the unity of action and necessity of a single action in the 9th chapter he says poetry is certainly a form of imitation and imitation is not just a copy of external appearances the poet probably takes into consideration the laws of possibility and necessity because he says he has to represent events in such a way that there appears to be a logical connection between them and they should appear as if uh, in a given circumstances so the sense of inevitable inevitability rather is uh, something that uh, helps the incidents to be represented as it is then he also talks about poetry he says is uh, more philosophical than history uh, because he says poetry is a, a sort of recounting what has happened in a chronological way and he is not concerned with the cause and effect whereas uh, philosophy is concerned with cause and effect because what means the desire to know the laws of things or generalize or widely he says all things are connected together in history we cannot be sure why a certain things happen in such a way but in poetry we know how things have happened and events are related to one another in a very coherent manner uh, for example even if the poet is writing of real people and experiences and he is uh, termed as a maker he selects his material and arranges it according to the design and coherent pattern when the pay maker or the poet aristotle says is talking of his own experiences it is the inevitability of the sequence of incidents he says which arouses the emotions which are peculiar and proper to a tragedy and so the law of possibility and necessity he makes it and calls it permanent and the universal facts of life because poetry transcends the world of appearance where all uh, so if something is chaotic he says it is necessary for the writers to use uh, traditional stories and names uh, and for the reasons of uh, acceptability then he says that the arousal of emotions of pity and fear he says are aroused in the incidents which occur very unexpectedly and at the same time in the consequence of one another 
this chapter 10th chapter has been uh, is deals with two kinds of plot the simple and complex he says plots are either simple or complex because plots are an imitation and show a similar distinction there is a simple plot he says firstly an action which is uh, which in which events only move forward and continuously only towards the catastrophe because there is no change of direction and no reversal no discovery so the hero's fortune or the character's fortunes they pass from misfortune to happiness and from happiness to misery and in a very direct manner that is why they are called as simple plots then the complex plots he says if they involve a change of direction in which the hero for hero's fortune it rises from at a certain point and then there is a turning point which is called the climax and some sort of discovery that leads to the change in this fortune so complex plots in fact involve peripety or discovery or sometimes both and this peripety and discovery he, sh he says it uh, arises uh, from the structure of the plots itself because uh, the consequence necessity and probability are important to give this rise to the structure of the plot and therefore he says he prefers complex plots because there are a lot of uh, discoveries recognition peripeties and discoveries so this makes it more interesting to uh, read and watch uh, this is this was the 10th chapter and in our coming session we'll be taking up further chapters of uh, aristotle and let's sum up what we did today from chapter from chapters 6th to 10th Aristotle talks about the definition of tragedy then he discusses the six constituent elements of a tragedy uh, the nature and function of tragedy and then the construction of plot he says which is in which the action should be whole and the unity of plot it should be uh, look like probable the poetic truth the law of possibility and necessity in a plot then he compares poetry and history and in the last chapter he talks about the kinds of plot which are of two types simple and complex we have to remember the definition of tragedy which is very important because it involves all the six constituent elements plot character thoughts diction melody song spectacle so we have to understand the difference between these and all the functions of a tragedy how it happens the reversal recognition catharsis climax peripety discovery etc these terms we'll have to read as our assignment which has been given to you in the form of pdf and after reading the assignment we have to make short notes and write brief notes on all these literary terms which aristotle discusses in his uh, poetics and particularly in the first 10 chapters that we have taken up so far thank you